Hello everyone and welcome to PC Retro Tech. In this week's video I want to take a look at some DOS ports of some very playable Amiga 500 games. So this is the Amiga 500 and it came out in 1987. Uh, it was already discontinued by 1991. Uh, it has a 7MHz CPU. It's not a PC of course, but it is a 32-bit CPU mostly. Uh, and of course it's well known that the Amiga 500 has a fantastic sound chip and a graphics chip. Now this one's been upgraded just slightly. It has a megabyte of memory instead of 512K, otherwise it's a stock standard Amiga 500. And right next to it we have the PC that we're going to be using today. It's our big box 486 build, which we did for the channel. It's actually got a 5x86 running at 160 megahertz and it will run Quake at 16 frames per second. So if you're interested in seeing how we did that, then check out the video on the channel. Uh, so I've got the Senglev's ET4000 video card in it. Uh, it's Visa Local Bus, and there's 16 megs of RAM in the machine, and I'll put a Sound Blaster 16 in it for the sound card. Now, of course, this means that this machine is going to be way more spec'd out than the Amiga 500, but the objective today is not to make the Amiga look bad, is to give the DOS ports the maximum possible chance of being playable. And we really want to identify some games that are not so well known amongst PC gamers uh, that are really playable on the Amiga, but also give a great gaming experience on the PC. This is the stash of games that I bought online, and my friends and I have already been through some of the Amiga 500 discs that I have, and found some really good games. Uh, this box is actually stacked two discs deep, and there's around 500 discs in all. Uh, but admittedly, some of these are actually for later Amiga computers, or even for 500s with upgrades that I don't have. The first game is Winter Olympiad 88. This is the Amiga version, of course, and the graphics are really quite stunning. Uh, so this is downhill skiing, and the um, objective here is to ski around uh, all the obstacles and of course to jump over anything that's uh, you know not going to be uh, able to be gotten around so there are for example logs and so on on the ground and uh, when those pop up you have to do a jump instead of steer around them and uh, this is uh, pretty hard to get the hang of especially if you don't know what to do initially but uh, once you've you know gone a certain distance with this um, you can uh, you can get all the way down the hill so the next event is Ski Jump, and basically you just launch down the hill with the fire button, and when you get to the bottom of the ramp you just press the fire button again, and then at the very bottom you have to steer left uh, so that you actually get all the way through to the end. So this is Biathlon, and first you do some cross country skiing, and eventually it will bring up a target range like this, and the idea is to make small adjustments to the uh, position rather than hold the the joystick down for too long which will make large adjustments and then you should be able to shoot out the targets um, which I should be able to do the next event is slalom and you have to keep the uh, skier on uh, one side of the green flags and the other side of the red flags and as you can see this is uh, essentially impossible um, you'll get a fault for every time you miss um, but if you can get to the bottom of the hill this way then um, you will get uh, you know fewer faults. The next event is bobsled and the objective here is just to not crash out uh, so you can control the brake on the bobsled and you can steer left and right and uh, obviously if you start going too fast you have to reduce the speed. And I found that if you keep it under about 45 then it seems to be uh, you know controlled okay. Here's Winter Olympiad running under DOS. Now I couldn't run it on the 486 because it was just way too fast and even when I clocked the processor way down and turned the cache off 
uh, I was still getting a gameplay that was just too impossibly fast and there was corruption in the graphics. Uh, so I've got it running on a 286 at 16 megahertz here and this seems to be a lot better. This is the opening title screen and on the 486 there was some corruption when I ran this. Uh, it seems to be working okay here on the 286. So let's run through the events. This is the downhill skiing but even with the turbo off uh, it still seems to be running too fast and uh, it's difficult to anticipate uh, that something is going to be in your way. Uh, with a little bit of practice you can just about get to the bottom of the hill uh, without crashing uh, but it's uh, really not tr trivial at all. This is the biathlon event and I'm not using the joystick here but the keyboard because unfortunately the joystick doesn't seem to work at all with this game uh, even though it is supposed to be supported and that makes this event in particular especially hard because it doesn't operate the same way as the Amiga version uh, the target just moves up and down and you're supposed to press the key to hit the target and unfortunately uh, it's just really difficult to get more than about two bullseyes uh, no matter what you do and uh, the Amiga version I was relatively easily able to get all five this is the ski jump and uh, it seems to be uh, just a little bit more playable and essentially the strategy is exactly the same you just press and hold the key and then when you land uh, you want to uh, steer left to finish the race and I found it very easy to get through on the first go uh, although I didn't jump that far so this is the slalom and I would actually say that it's a little bit more controllable than the Amiga version which is quite a surprise uh, one of the difficulties with it is falling over when you're not actually uh, you know going through a flag or something or even going fast it just seems to be random that you fall over when you turn sometimes in the snow and uh, you know games aren't a lot of fun when they depend on uh, random chance uh, much more than skill uh, so that makes it a little bit of a downer uh, to play in some ways uh, but, uh, you know, overall it's uh, certainly an improvement on the speed of the uh, Amiga version which was just, in my opinion, uh, a little too fast. This is the bobsled and the same criticism seems to apply. It seems to run a little too fast. Um, it's a little bit easier in that all you really need to do, it seems, is stay in the middle of the track uh, and the speed seems to take care of itself in this particular version. Um, it is still very challenging to get to the bottom and it's not clear how much of that is luck and how much of it is skill. Um, it also seems to be over before it starts and then the uh, finish screen that was on the Amiga doesn't show, it just goes straight on to the next attempt. This is Marble Madness and I think my friends and I would agree that this is probably the most fun uh, of the games that we uh, took a look at. Now the first level here is quite straightforward and uh, all you really need to do is just get the hang of the controls. It's fairly easy to get through in the amount of time that's allotted, uh, at least after the first few tries. Uh, so it's just a, a really short course uh, so that you can practice. This is the second level and I'm not going to show very many levels because I don't want to really spoil the game uh, for people who want to play it. Uh, you can see that uh, it's very different on every single level and there are all sorts of new challenges to uh, face at every, uh, you know, every turn. Um, now I wouldn't say that it's easy to uh, get through these levels. Uh, you need to practice for quite a while before you know exactly what to do. So one of the nice things is that when something happens to you uh, and you have to restart, it doesn't restart the whole game or even the whole level, it just restarts you from where you were. Uh, but your time is running down as you do this and so it doesn't restart the amount of time that you have uh, available and so the objective is just to get through uh, without uh, the time running down to zero. So here's a glimpse of the third level just for fun and I won't spoil any more of the game than that. Uh, I'll let you download this and play it for yourself. 
Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of variation and each of the levels has its own challenges. Um, and I think that's what makes it uh, a lot of fun. It's not the same thing over and over again, but uh, it's really been thought through carefully uh, to make an entertaining game out of it. This is Marble Madness on the PC, and you might be surprised to learn that I've gone all the way back to an XT here because the 286 was just way too fast. Uh, it couldn't be played at all. Um, so this version seems to be a little bit more playable in some respects because uh, when you go over the edge here, uh, it's a little bit forgiving and lets you roll a little bit over the edge before you fall off. This is the second level and things are much more difficult here and it's particularly hard because the controls don't line up with the direction that the uh, lines on the grid are and this is different to the Amiga. Uh, so it means that you really have trouble um, staying on the, the path because uh, you have to move the keys back and forth a lot in order to, uh, to manage this. Uh, so this, this uh, level is way harder than it is on the Amiga. Uh, the other thing is it seems to put you in only an, a small number of different places when it restarts you. And so uh, you often end up being uh, in a location that you don't expect to be when you restart. And uh, that can make it a little harder as well. Uh, but overall, it's still a pretty playable game. And I think that uh, I'd have to say this is still recommended um, to, to try out uh, if you've never tried this game before. This is FA-18 Interceptor. And it's basically a flight simulator style uh, game. And we shouldn't expect too much from that. Flight simulators are actually very difficult to make smooth. I'm just going to run the demo here, and of course the first thing it'll do is take off. Uh, now you'll all notice that it's uh, quite jerky, but uh, you know flight simulators of this era were. In fact, flight simulators still are. Even on the most uh, expensive hardware you can get, uh, they can still be quite jerky and take minutes to load scenery. Uh, so he does a few acrobatics after he takes off. In the middle of the screen there's a little black dot there and that is actually uh, his target and so he's going to lock onto that uh, and intercept it. Uh, so you'll see in a moment he'll go outside the cockpit and uh, you'll get a view of the missile actually reaching the target. Uh, so it's pretty realistic, um, especially the flames there look quite amazing. Here he's doing a roll, and he'll actually do a full barrel roll uh, in a moment, and turn all the way around. Uh, so you can actually do acrobatics in this plane, uh, which is cool given that you can see the plane from outside. There's actually quite a lot of scenery in this game, which is really a surprise because every line that you draw, you have to calculate uh, using trig the, uh, from the angles where the dots should go. And this can be very expensive, uh, so um, it's really a surprise to find buildings and towers, uh, islands, all sorts of different scenery uh, in this particular game. And uh, yeah, it's really actually quite good to look at as well. It's visually uh, quite impressive, uh, especially given that this was, uh, you know, late 80s, early 90s technology. The FA-18 Interceptor game doesn't exist per se on the PC, but uh, there is Jet Fighter the Adventure, which is actually a rewrite of the Amiga game uh, for PC. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just a free flight mode, because the demo that we saw before doesn't exist. Uh, we're going to take off from San Francisco International Airport, which is the same airport that's used in the uh, FA-18 Interceptor game uh, on the uh, demo. And it took me a little while to work out how to actually get started with this. So the first thing that you need to do is take the brake off, and that is with the B key. And uh, then you can uh, select a number um, above the uh, letters on the keyboard rather than on the numeric keypad. And that will change the amount of thrust that you have. And you probably want to set it up to at least 80% or so uh, to be able to fly. Uh, then you should be able to fly around. Now this is an EGA game as you can see and uh, you can set the uh, background for different times of day and so this purple color is 
uh, supposed to be dusk or dawn. And uh, I think that the performance here is really exceptional. In fact, the game was lauded for its uh, incredible performance at the time. Uh, this came out in 1988, the first version, and uh, in fact the series of games actually runs uh, through until very recently, I believe. Um, uh, they're still being manufactured. Uh, so it was an incredibly successful game, and perhaps some of you have actually seen this on the PC. Uh, the amazing thing is that you know even on a 286 here with the turbo switched off, um, this is still incredibly smooth. Uh, and there are, of course, uh, you know, towers and uh, buildings and so on uh, in various parts of this as well, uh, just the same as we had in the Amiga. Uh, now, the other thing I should say about this is it didn't run at all on the 486. It basically just gave me a message about dividing by zero. It's usually the other way around. Things often run on the 486 and won't run uh, on the uh, 286 or earlier. Uh, so I'm going to fly down here towards the bridge, uh, which is uh, presumably the same bridge that we saw in the FA-18 Interceptor game. And uh, we'll take a look and see how it compares uh, to that version of the game. So I just want to show you that it really is the same scenery. Uh, this is the tower that, and the buildings that we saw in FA-18 Interceptor. And of course this is the bridge uh, that we flew under in that version of the game. Uh, so it really is the same game and I think it's probably little known uh, that it's the same game. When I went around looking for FA-18 Interceptor for PC on the internet, I actually found it really hard to find the information about uh, the name of the game on uh, the PC. Uh, anyway, I think this is a really impressive port and uh, clearly someone's put a lot of extra effort into this. It wasn't just a straightforward port from the Amiga version. This is a game called Jim Power, and I would say that the graphics and soundtrack in this are absolutely astonishingly good. Um, one of the downsides of this game is that it takes quite a long time to start up uh, on the loading screen, which I'm going to skip here. Uh, and you die relatively quickly, so you have a lot of waiting around to do until you get better at the game. This is what the game looks like when it starts. Unfortunately my joystick is backwards and so uh, it's a little bit difficult for me to play this. Uh, I'm also not very good at this style of game anyway and so uh, yeah it's not going to be possible for me to do a very good job of this unfortunately. Uh, but uh, the basic idea is to run along and uh, obviously not get uh, deaded by the people running along who attack you uh, and yeah you collect uh, various things as you go along as well. Uh, so I'm not going to play this for very long because as I said I'm actually really terrible at this sort of thing um, and uh, we'll just move on to uh, the PC port of this uh, just for comparison. This is Jim Power on the PC and it seems to be quite a different game uh, it's obviously uh, related, but uh, not exactly the same as on the Amiga. Uh, so, unfortunately, the game seems to assume that you have a working joystick, uh, which apparently I don't. Uh, so I'm going to let it run through uh, the first couple of uh, scenes of its demo. Uh, now, this is obviously very different to the Amiga uh, game. Uh, this is obviously a completely different level. Uh, but you'll see that the next level that comes up uh, is actually relatively similar uh, to the Amiga game, and so you can see the sort of relationship between the two. Now this is running on the 486. Uh, I haven't got it cranked up uh, to a high frequency because it's not needed. Um, and you'll notice that there's no sound, so I don't see any way to activate sound on this. Um, it doesn't detect the sound blaster and the PC speaker doesn't seem to do anything either. Uh, anyway, this is the uh, level that I think is most similar to the Amiga. And so I'll just let this play through and uh, you can see some of the similarities with the uh, people running along uh, in uh, sort of Centurion uniforms and uh, spikes in the ground, uh, floating platforms and so on. Uh, so it's very, very similar in a lot of ways, but you can see that the graphics have been completely redone for VGA, 
uh, on the PC. Uh, so it's a shame that I'm unable to actually play this game. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, on the other hand, uh, this is the sort of game that I'm not particularly good at myself. This is Transplant and it's another one with a really impressive soundtrack and pretty good opening graphics. Uh, but let's take a look at what the game itself looks like. So there's uh, quite a number of levels. Uh, there are actually people online that say they spent months playing this game. Uh, so it's really addictive and uh, you know has a lot of detail and depth to it. Uh, in the first uh, level, level zero, uh, you're basically just shooting at asteroids and there's nothing else there. But in later levels, uh, additional things get added. Uh, which you can shoot at ships and, uh, you know, fix turrets and so on. So this is the third level, uh, level two, and uh, in this particular one you have some brown ships, uh, and they are a little bit more adventurous, they tend to come towards you and attack, uh, so you have to stay out of their way to some extent. Um, they will run away if you start chasing them uh, or point your weapons at them. This is the fifth level, and the main difference are uh, that there are those big red fixed turrets in the distance, uh, which have really quite a long range. Uh, the other thing is that the brown ships are just that little bit more aggressive uh, when they're firing at you, and so it's quite easy to get destroyed by those while you're trying to get rid of these, uh, these big cannons. Now, Transplant was, I believe, an independent game, and so there was never any direct port of it to the PC. Uh, but of course, it was just a uh, port of the original Asteroids arcade game, and an equally famous game for the PC uh, based on Asteroids is EGA Roids. So we're going to take a look at that. This is what EGA Roids looks like, and the controls are not very uh, intuitive. It's left shift and left alt to change direction and uh, it's right shift to fire. If you want to move forward, uh, there's two ways to do it. You can press caps lock, which is just about the most unintuitive control I've ever seen on a game, uh, or you can uh, press the space bar and it will just put you into uh, hyperspace, and so to speak, and you'll pop up somewhere else uh, on the screen. Uh, so uh, I find this to be uh, a little monotonous to play compared to the Amiga one. Uh, when you go to a new level it just seems to change the colour of the screen which is not very interesting in comparison. Uh, but I guess you know if this is what you had on your PC uh, this probably would have been just every bit as addictive as the arcade game. Uh, anyway that's all I'm going to uh, show for this week. Uh, this is a pretty long video already and so I'm going to break this into a two-parter. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing more of this, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, yeah, that's all we have for this week. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you in a later video. Bye.